Hi, welcome to another 3D Fluff video. Uh, in today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can speed up your renders. I'm not going to dive into anything with too much detail. Keep an eye out for other videos if you really want to get a bit, a bit more deep down. Um, but today, I'm just going to quickly dive in and show you how you can get faster renders. So let's start off with our render settings. In the render settings, probably the biggest culprit is going to be anti-aliasing. For anti-aliasing, you've broadly got two settings, one called geometry, one called best. Geometry is nice and fast, because the only bits of the image it will actually process are the outside edges of all your geometry, hence the name geometry mode. Um, the downside, though, is that it doesn't anti-alias things behind glass, and it doesn't anti-alias anything within a reflection. So if you've got lots of glass, got lots of chrome objects, unfortunately you're going to be stuck with best mode. Now, my first bit of advice is, if you can, if you can get away with it, stick with geometry mode. It renders an awful lot faster, maybe two, three, four times as quick in a lot of cases. But after your test render, you'll realize quite quickly if you can or can't get away with it. If you can't, you're going to be stuck with the best method. Yes, it's a lot slower, but just let me warn you about a few of these settings which you should and shouldn't be changing. One of the biggest mistakes I see made is this minimum level. With the anti-aliasing, it will rent each pixel somewhere between 1x1, one 2x2, one, two two, and 4x4 four four anti-aliasing. Those are the defaults because it goes from 1 to 4. Um, the biggest mistake I see a lot of people making, though, is that they will increase this minimum level. You should almost, I'm not going to, I'm not going to chisel this in stone, because there are exceptions, but you should almost never use a higher minimum level than one by one. If you're rendering your image and it doesn't look good enough, and I'll tell you probably the most common thing where this happens, is in the bottom of glass. If you're rendering an image, uh, particularly of glass, this chunky bit at the bottom often has a lot of noise in, for example. If your image doesn't look good enough, change the maximum. Uh, if you bump it up from 4x4 four four to 8x8, eight eight, this will increase your render time a bit, but nowhere near as much as changing the minimum woods, and you'll get better quality from it. So always leave this set at 1x1, one one, and if you do need more quality in your little refractive and reflective areas, increase this to 8x8. Eight eight. If this still isn't good enough, change the threshold. The threshold determines how quickly it goes from the, min from the minimum to the maximum anti-aliasing. And the lower this number gets, the quicker it does it. So if you need a higher quality, bump this up to 5%. Sorry, bump this down to 5% rather. Uh, but I would genuinely recommend you do not go any higher than these. Do not increase the minimum. Really try not to go above 8x8 because that 16 by 16 your render times are through the roof. Forget about it. Um, and again, don't knock the threshold down much below 5%, otherwise it really, really churns it and slows it down. Um, everything else in here, leave it alone. None of this will really affect your render times to any great, great degree. Um, right, the next thing then, take a look under your options. Here's your options tab. There's two main things in here which can help you out quite a bit. The first one is going to be reflection depth. Reflection depth. Imagine you've got two mirrors side by side. Reflection depth is how many times the ray of light will bounce back and forth between them. Now look around in the room you're sat in. How many reflections of reflections of reflections can you see? Even if I look into a shiny object like the metal on this mic, I might be able to see, I don't know, my, my phone sat here. I might be able to see a reflection in my mic of my phone. You probably can't see it there. Compression's fun. Um, but within that reflection, can I see what reflects in my phone? That would be one, two. That would be two levels deep. The, the honest answer is probably no, probably not. Um, so if you want to save yourself a bit more time in your reflections, try turning down how many reflections it does. In a lot of my renders, I knock this down to just one or two. Um, 
if I'm doing Chrome objects and Chrome logos, okay, maybe you need a bit more, three, four, five, six. But you'll you'll be quite surprised. You can often turn this down quite far with very little difference to your image, and it can potentially save you a lot of time, especially when you're using global illumination. GI is slow enough at the best of times, let alone when you're bouncing it back and forth between shiny objects. So try turning reflection depth down to one or two. You, you, you might find that helps. If you go too far, objects start turning black. You, you'll know when you've gone too far. And the other one, it's actually a material setting, but there's a nice quick way of fixing it here. One of the slowest features in cinema is blurriness. Blurred reflections, blurred transparency, basically frosted glass and frosted mirrors. If you take a look in your materials and you look at either your transparency or your reflection channels, you will see there is a blurriness setting, which is great. It's nice and lovely. It allows you to get some nice frosted mirrors going on. But good God, is it slow. Um, if I'm fixing a scene for someone, I do this quite often. The first thing I look for, in terms of render speed at least, is this blurriness setting. Um, now, you can either just turn it off in the material, or if you're looking at a scene with hundreds of materials and you don't want to have to go through every single material looking for this setting, there is a nice little blurriness setting in your render settings. Just turn it off. Now, this isn't so much to say, get rid of it, don't use it, but if you're trying to work out, first of all, why, why are your renders so slow? A nice fast one is render the image, time it, and then render it again with the blurriness turned off and see if it fixes it, see if it speeds up. If so, start taking a look at your render settings, sorry, start taking a look at your material settings. Um, my advice is if you're going to use a blurry reflection or a blurry transparency, only use it if you really need it. One thing I see happen time and time again is people will say, oh, here's a glass. You know what? The transparency on this glass. Let's pop that in there. The transparency on this glass, it's not perfect. It's a bit of dirt, a bit of grease on it. I'll just put in 1% blur. You ready for this? Watch watch the little thumbnail in the corner here. Let's make it larger so that you can see it a bit better. Okay, so here's no blur. And you can see the difference it makes even just re rendering this uh, little material preview. Okay, so ah, make sure you turn off the reflection one because it does affect it even if it's turned off because your transparencies have reflections. That's why it's so slow. Okay, so to process this little thumbnail probably takes half a second. If I pop in 1% blur, even this little preview sphere takes a lot longer to process. And can you see it? Can you notice it? I know there's going to be video compression, but it does virtually nothing for the object except boost the render times incredibly. So either use it on things where you're going to notice it. Mmm, 20% blur. Look at that lovely frosted window. Or just don't waste your time with it. I, I, I just don't see that it's going to be worth the amount of time it has to your renders. So... I should point out, by the way, the render speed is not much different between 1% blur or 100%. So don't think you're saving yourself render times by turning the setting down, because it doesn't work like that. It, it pretty much takes the same amount of time regardless. Okay. So let's see. That's uh, anti-aliasing, reflection depth, and turning off the blur setting. What else can I show you? Uh, let's take a quick look into global illumination. Now, the first big obvious thing is don't use it if it won't make any difference. Oh, you're an idiot. I know what I'm doing. I hear you yell. Well, again, common thing I see. Someone will have grabbed themselves a nice text logo. They'll have thrown in a sky environment. And as far as the materials go, they'll have a bit of reflection for their text, nice bit of chrome text, keeping it classy here. And for the sky in the background, let's just grab ye olde kitchen image. 
So I'm just going to grab a surrounding HDR image for the background. So here's my lovely bit of text, my lovely, lovely logo. And we'll hit render. So this is with no global illumination. And again, another thing I see quite often is people will just turn it on. They'll say, oh yeah, global illumination, that's awesome, let's turn it on. Okay, let's. Let's see what it happens, see what it does for us. So my first render here took one second. And with the global illumination turned on, you ready for this? This amazing, impressive difference? <laughs> for the sake of doubling, quadrupling, and in some horrible cases, having your render times 10 times as long, if you don't have any soft, diffuse surfaces, that is, things which aren't shiny and reflective, it's rarely worth it. Um, if you don't see much difference with it on or off, there's a slight difference in a highlight there, but you could change that by just popping in an extra light source. Don't waste your time with it. Okay, so that, that's my first thing. As obvious as it might sound, check if it makes any real discernible difference. If it just gets a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, just throw in another light source. Save yourself a lot of render time. Um, okay, but let's say you're not a complete fool and you are using global illumination usefully. I'm not going to dive into all the settings. There's quite a few in here. I'm just going to show you how you can quickly speed up your test renders and possibly even your final render. Um, the main ones are you're, you're likely to be using irradiance caching. That's this IR mode here. What you'll find on your next couple of tabs are the sample settings and the irradiance cache settings. Quickly, at the top of this, you'll see there are two presets with things like low, medium, and high. So we've got one here for our samples, and we've got another one here for our record density. If you just want to quickly get your test renders done, and your test renders, you'll probably do 100 test renders and then one or two final images. Set them down to low. If you set these two bits here down to low quality, it won't look quite as good, but you know what? Your test renders will be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times faster. When you get to the very final stage, then you can turn up your quality. Just turn it up to medium. I wouldn't recommend you go much higher than medium settings. High is very slow. But yeah, give yourself quicker test renders. There's no need to have the highest quality render settings for these. Um, let's see what our sensor, global illumination, ambient occlusion, there's not much I can really tell you about that. It, it is what it is, there's not much you're really going to change to adjust the speed. Um, let's see what else, so there's nothing else which is going to make a huge difference. File formats and alpha channels, they don't affect it. Multipass, not really. There's nothing else under the options. Um, and again, none of these effects has any significant impact on your render time, so don't worry about those too much. Um, another bit though I will show you though are subdivision settings. Easily ignored, easily missed. If you have an object, let's just quickly throw a few polygons on this. Extrude, extrude, la 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 la. Just quickly make a shape of some sort. Okay. Hypernerbs. In your Hypernerbs object, there are two subdivision settings. When you place your geometry inside the Hypernerbs, oh look, it goes nice and smooth. But keep in mind, if you think this looks good enough, if this is your component and you know this is this is all it needs to look like when you hit render, great, lovely. Watch out, the subdivision setting. It uses, a different ob it uses a different setting for the editor, which is this, and a different setting for the final rendering. So if you think it already looks perfectly fine here, with the default settings, it's actually dividing it once more. It's actually quadrupling your number of polygons on that object. Now, polygons aren't quite the horrible slow speed things they were of years gone by, but you still want to keep them as low as you can. So if you think this looks perfectly fine, Reduce the render setting to match it. There's no point rendering more 
than you need. If it already looks great, turn the setting down. Um, okay, now that will do for the first part. Um, I will probably make another video dealing with particularly the physical render engine and how you can save a lot of time there. Um, but for now, that's just, a, that's just a, a few little things which hopefully will save you a bit of time, clear up some misconceptions. Uh, I'll see you around for the next, so go watch some more videos, whether they're down there or to the side. I don't know what YouTube and Vimeo look like. Go find more videos. There's more stuff.